Hello everybody, you're very welcome to this episode of Programming and Algorithms. In this episode we're going to look at queues again, but this time we're going to look at implementing queue as a linked list. So we'll remember a queue from before, you join at the back and then you get served at the front. This is a normal human queue, this is our monster queue, which is a very very big queue, and I definitely wouldn't like to get involved in this queue. Uh, we know that queues are first in, first out, because the first person to join the queue is the first person who gets served. So it's a FIFO structure, uh, and the more we can remember FIFO, the better. Um, if we think about an implementation of a queue, we could see the elements of the queue standing horizontally beside each other. And then we have the notion of the front of the queue and the back of the queue. And we know that if I want to access an element, the only element I can access is number 31, the front of the queue. And if I want to join, I join behind the number 59. So I can only join from the back. So I process from the front and join from the back. If I add a value exactly, 86, it goes to the back. If I want to take a value away, it comes off from the front, 31. So this is really, really useful if we're thinking about stuff like printer queues. So if there's 10 of us in a room and we all send a job to the printer at the same time, instead of storing all 10 jobs in the printer, there's a bit of software called a printer queue that accepts each job as it's sent. So whoever clicks print first gets to the front of the queue, then next, then next, then next. And then the jobs are typically processed, printed out in this case, in that order, unless some job has a priority. So if I'm the boss of the company or something, my print jobs might get priority over everyone else's. So I get to skip the queue, but we'll only think about a non-prioritized queue at the moment. So add to the back, take from the front. When we implemented a queue as an array, we had an array called queue. The maximum length of the queue was called max size. We had a, a front pointer called head and a back pointer called tail. When we implement a linked list, we don't need to give the linked list a name. The linked list has no maximum length, but we'll still have a front pointer called Q head in this case, and a back pointer called Q tail. So again, the key points there are, we don't give Q uh, linked list names, and there is no maximum size of a linked list. We can each keep adding nodes on over and over again. There's no fixed size, whereas when I declare an array, I say, Q, open square bracket, 10, close square bracket, which means it can only be 10 elements long. Let's have a look at implementing a queue. It's exactly like implementing a stack. We create our node type, and then we say create uh, an empty list, and then we have the head and tail pointer pointing to the front of the empty list for the moment. So we're using that head pointer from the linked list, but that's the only time we'll try and use the head pointer from now on. We'll either use the, we'll try and use the queue head and queue tail pointers when we're creating our modules or methods for manipulating the queue. So here we go, and we can see that the head pointer from the linked list is grayed out just to remind us we should try and avoid using that pointer in our modules. Instead, we'll use our queue head and queue tail pointers and we'll note that the tail points to the element that points to null and the head points to the element that there's nothing pointing to it. So let's look at how we implement the following methods. Is full, is empty, add to queue, delete from queue and clear the queue. Let, how do we check if the queue is full? Well we, we've heard this gag already so we know there's no such thing as a full queue if it's implemented as a linked list in the sense that we can always add a new node onto the linked list, keep adding nodes on, so it's infinite in terms of size. So we could print out a message saying the queue is never going to be full. In the same way, we, or in the opposite way to an array, when we have all the elements of the array filled in, it just stops being, there's no space left. How do we check if the queue is empty? Well, the queue is quite simply empty if the queue head and the queue tail point to the same thing. And in particular, if the queue head is equal to the queue tail and that's equal to null, then the queue is empty, else it's, there's, a, there's some values in it. So we can just return queue head equals queue tail. We might even return queue head equals queue tail equals null if we wanted to be particularly fussy about this. How do we add an item to the queue? 
Well, where do we add to the queue? We add to the back. So we add to the queue tail. So that means what we're going to do is where it says null there now, we'll add a new node in there. And then we'll have the new node point to null. And we'll move the queue tail back from pointing to 31 in this case, to whatever the value of the new node is. So let's look at the code in pseudocode. Create a new node, call it new node. The value is in, whatever value is passed in. Now the queue tail pointer, instead of pointing to null now, it points to the new node. And then the pointer Q tail now points to new node. So we've moved the back of the queue back one because somebody else has joined the queue. How do we delete from the queue? Well, where do we delete from? We delete from the front. So we delete number 23. So how do we delete? If we move Q head from 23 to 62, that means 23 has been processed. So let's look at the code. Um, Simply put, we, if the queue is empty, we, just, we say the queue is empty. Otherwise, we store the head value in n and we say that queue head now points to the new value that the queue has. How about clearing the queue? How do we clear a queue? If the queue tail is set to be the same value as queue head, which is set to be null, we've cleared the queue. So. If Q head is assigned head and Q tail is assigned tail, that means we've cleared the queue. So that's it. Thanks very much. We'll see you on the next episode.